In this video, you're gonna be learning about what causes the death of poker focus, and more importantly, how you can overcome that to get yourself focusing at a high level for every session you play. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Adam Carmichael. I'm a mindset performance coach who helps poker players to reach that peak level of performance. Now in today's video, we're gonna be diving deep into the mind and understand how the brain works, which makes it a challenge for you to focus at the poker tables. So first of all, we need to be aware that the brain is taking in a lot of information, okay? So if the brain didn't do certain things, which I'm gonna explain in today's video, we very quickly get overloaded by information. So the brain only takes up 2%, 2% of the weight of the body, but it consumes 25% of the energy. So it's a massive energy consumption machine, but it's also very, very efficient. And it gets rid of some information and it holds on to other information that it thinks is important. Now, as a poker player, you need to be understand how this is working as the default mode of the brain. If you let the brain do what it does to dynamic regular energy, it's gonna lead to you not being able to focus at the poker tables. You listening now? All right, cool. Let's dive into the three mechanisms or the process of the brain that cause you to struggle to focus at the poker tables. And I'll tell you how to reverse that so that you can actually ramp up that focus. All right, so the first thing the brain does when it takes information is it generalizes. So, it generalizes. It generalizes information. So for you as a poker player, the way this is relevant to you, you'll see a board, it might be jack eight, nine, or jack seven, six. It's gonna group lots of things together. So rather than every situation being completely unique, completely uh, novel, it's gonna create structures and kind of frameworks for dealing with stuff. So this is how habits are formed, and it's gonna generalize. This is kind of a wet board. This is a dry board. This is an ace high board. It's gonna generalize things. Now as a poker player, when you've been playing a long time, you've, these generalizations grow and grow, and you end up with a kind of default way of playing more spots. If you've been playing two, three, four years, you've probably got a default way of playing almost all spots, unless they get really funky pre-flop and things go crazy. So you've generalized a lot of spots. So that generalization allows you to group lots of things together, allows the brain to group information so that you don't need to uh, expend as much energy. If there was no generalization, everything would be taken at face value. So a novel situation, the brain would go crazy. Everything would seem very similar. So the brain first off generalizes, that narrows down the energy consumption. The second thing it does, after it's generalized, sometimes in the uh, generalization process, it deletes, it deletes information that doesn't seem relevant. So for you as a poker player, you will be deleting information. Let's say you're an online player, you've got a nice fancy hood up, and you'll be taking in certain information that you think is relevant, but you'll be deleting and ignoring other things. And as a poker player, this is dangerous because the more information we take in, the better, right? Obviously, you can't take in everything. This is the, the problem the brain has. It doesn't want to be overloaded. But the more you delete, the more narrow your focus goes. So the brain's going to try and delete everything it doesn't think is relevant. So if you've trained your brain or, or let your brain kind of run on autopilot, there's a good chance it's just deleting a lot of information. So this creates blind spots. Blind spots because you can't see what you're missing. You've deleted like certain, certain frequencies on his hood you're not looking at. Certain bits of information are passing you by through that deletion process. Once it's deleted, the third thing it does, which kind of saves energy, is distorts, I'm not sure I spelled it right. It distorts information. So basically through the lens that you're looking through, you will see certain things. So for example, the way it distorts things is to make kind of generalizations or categorizations. Let's say you see a, a player who's aggressive in one spot. You may have a sample size of one and you'll very quickly go, he's an aggressive player. Or you'll see someone bluff in a, a spot where you, you wouldn't have bluffed. You go, this guy's spewy. Or like say someone's folding, folding a few times too many, this guy's tight. So we distort information through the lens by uh, narrowing our focus. And basically it's a form of generalization, but it's distorting because we're looking for a certain lens. We start to label stuff and categorize things that allow us to narrow it down. So um, as a poker player, the brain is doing these three things, right? So we cannot stop the brain wanting to do these. Imagine you're the brain. The brain wants to survive, reproduce, keep, keep itself running. It doesn't want to be expending loads of energy playing poker, in all honesty, unless it's life or death. So we've got to battle against this. So if you don't fight back and find ways to, which I'm gonna go through three ways to overcome this process, you're gonna have a lower level of focus. When you, the more you play, the more your brain will go, ah, I'll generalize, I know how to play this, and you'll end up in this autopilot in ABC mode, or you'll end up falling into this mode. That just means 
The brain is expending less energy. You can probably play longer hours, but you're just gonna be going through the motions. Now, as a poker player, if you wanna play high level, if you wanna have the highest win rates and make great money, focus is literally probably the number one variable. Like, you've really got to uh, crank up your focus and be the guy who's like nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 focus every time you play. And you've really gotta train yourself to do that. What's really good about focus, which I want you guys to know, is it's a skill, it's a muscle, it's like a muscle you train. So if you go in the gym, you never work out, your muscles are gonna be weak. But if you train those just a little bit, you're not gonna go into uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger overnight, but slowly the muscle gets a bit stronger. It gets a bit stronger. So right now, if you're watching this and you're like, I'm the most distractible person, my environment distracts me, I can't focus for more than 20 minutes, fine. That just means it's like being weak in the gym. You train yourself to force a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And that's it. So this is how you do it. There's three things you need to do to train the focus skill set. The first thing you need to do is to override the default. So we'll call it overriding the default. The brain's default is to conserve energy. We want it, the energy to be ramped up. Low energy means low process of information. We want, the, we want to trick the brain or tell the brain Ramp it up, let's, let's get this energy level higher. I don't care if it, it takes energy. I don't care if it's gonna burn you out, brain. We're, doing, it's, we're playing poker at a high level here. Stop being lazy, let's ramp it up. So we're gonna, we're gonna push it, we're gonna push it. So the first thing you do is you set intention. So the reason for me making this video was I want you guys to be aware of the processing so then you can take step one. You can set the intention to have a higher level of focus. If you go into a session blinded and you're like, oh, I wanna focus, but I don't know what's happening in my brain. It just feels like I haven't got the energy. You're gonna just go for the motions. But if you know that your brain's generalizing, deleting and distorting, and you're like, oh, okay, my brain's trying to power down. That makes sense to me. I'm gonna set the intention to put more energy in. I'm gonna set the intention to not generalize. I'm gonna pay attention, set the intention to want to focus more. So that's the first thing. Second thing, which is probably the most important one, is conscious effort. You need conscious effort. You need to be paying attention all the time. As soon as your mind's drifting elsewhere, you're thinking about a text message or something your friend said or what you're gonna have for dinner, all of a sudden your mind's not focusing and the, the default's gonna take over. So you've got to consciously try to focus. So if your brain's trying to generalize, you've got to trick the brain into thinking, this is novel, this is new, this is a unique situation. And you do that by making it a game within a game. So you start to tell the brain, you start to try to guess, guess the next card. You try to guess your opponent's um, next bet size. So the brain's basically going, yeah, it's another one of these spots. I know what to do, ABC poker. But you wanna go, no, no, brain, don't, don't treat it that way. This is a different spot. I'm up against different opponents. This is new stuff going on, watch. A queen could go, oh, cat just knocked the camera. Uh, anything could happen right now. You wanna trick the brain into thinking anything could happen. And that's gonna consciously put effort in. And I think a lot of people don't understand that focus requires effort. When focus happens effortlessly, you, uh, you, you get high focus. Um, but sometimes focus is low and you need to ramp it up. You need to ramp it up by effort. Effort is the key, right? So set the intention for the session. I'm gonna focus well the session. Consciously put the effort in. If focus is low, Try to go further, try to go a bit higher. And the final one is measure, measure your performance. You need to measure, are you actually focused in a high level? Are you, is your default a six out of 10 focus or an eight out of 10 focus? And you really need to get a spotlight on every single hour you play, how high is your focus? I think people are very lazy on this. They're literally like, yeah, I focus okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm decent at focusing. Sometimes I get distracted. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean you're a six out of 10 for focus or an 8.6? Massive difference. So your goal is to get your focus score higher and higher and higher. By setting the intention before session, I'm gonna get my focus high. Conscious effort to try to get it high and then measure, did I get it high or did I not? And it over time, it's gonna get higher and higher, but it's gonna start slowly. So if you can only focus for 30 minutes without getting distracted, you wanna to go to 31 minutes and 32 and 33. And you, you train the muscle, you train the, the, the focus muscle. So you gotta understand you're up against a uphill fight basically against the, the brain's three mechanisms, the generalize, delete, and distort. The brain's not doing it to fuck you over, but it is doing it for its own gains. And its interest in survival are higher than your interest in poker. But you can override it by teaching the brain to set intention, effort, and measure your results by consciously trying to zone in, consciously doing that effort. And if you do that, your focus will go for the roof, your poor performance will go for the roof, and make this part of your day, make this a part of your life. Don't just watch this video and take no action. Go away and go right. 
How can I implement this? How can I start to measure my focus and set the intention every session to try and focus more? And you'll see very quickly when your focus scores go up, your profits go up, your win rates go up, and everything else falls into place. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to take massive action and actually create a systemized way to improve your poker focus, as well as your overall performance, lifestyle, and mindset, I've got a few spots available in my Peak Performance Program. You can just click on the link in the description and go through the quick application form. And if you're a good fit, I will reach out and we'll get on a free consultation call to see if we're a good fit to work together. Now, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that like button before you leave so I know that you're enjoying this style of video. There's gonna be plenty more coming from me very soon.